What's up? This is Brett Scallions with Fuel. You got it tuned in right here, loud and proud, with Brigade Radio One. You're listening to Brigade Radio One. I got a question for you. What's it like getting up the morning in the morning and being like, man, I'm Poncho Sanchez. <laughs> Dude, like, brother, I am, did you know I am Poncho Sanchez? Like, yeah, don't, don't forget to take out the trash and uh, <laughs> put some dogs, uh, some dog food down there for the dogs right away because they like to go downstairs right, right. away. <laughs> all of a sudden you're grounded. You wake up and you're like, oh, Poncho Sanchez. And then all of a sudden the wife says, okay, now you got, here's your list. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're looking at a Remo drum, right? The Poncho Sanchez model. This thing is pretty yeah. special. This is the, uh, they call this model the Molten C model. Uh, I've been with Remo for about uh, 20 years now. And he's just the next exit up the freeway yeah. here, you know. And uh, Remo Belli was a very, very close friend of mine. Of course, he passed a couple of years ago. Uh, but the company is still going very strong. I was just there two weeks ago. And so um, they we, we had made one, two, four different models of Poncho Sanchez Conga. There was the El Conguero model and uh, Signature Series model. And then I also uh, involved with them making the synthetic conga heads. These conga heads... The actual conga head that we hit, it's synthetic. Now, in the old days, uh, the, the, the conga head, the top of the drum, is made from an animal's belly, like a side of a, in the old days, like in Africa, where the conga comes from, like a zebra or whatever, they would stretch it on, the, on top of the conga drum, you know what I mean? And they, and they used to make a hollow out of shell of a conga out of a, like a, a tree stump, you know what I mean? That's way back when, in Africa. Nowadays, we got synthetic heads, and the amazing thing about the, these drums and the synthetic heads is Remo Belli himself, back in the late 50s, early 60s, he changed the whole drum world. Drummers, you know, drum set, trap set drummers. Everybody used to use calf heads in the 40s and 50s on the trap set, on the drum set. And he is the first guy to to take in a plastic snare head into a couple of groups and tell them, hey man, try this out, try this out. And everybody said, it's plastic, you know, you, you know, it's ridiculous, you know. They play and they go, wow, but it sounds crispy and clean, you know what I mean? Well, anyway, long story short, he changed the whole drum world because I don't know anybody use calf heads on drums no more. They use Remo synthetic heads. Well, he came to me 20 years ago in Seponcho I want to see about making some synthetic conga heads for congas. I said, it ain't going to work because on a conga drum, it has to have that natural sound, you know, wood, conga shell. He changed everything and surprised me. I worked with him on these heads for about a year. I, uh, I would come over here once a month, and now we have four different types of synthetic conga heads. And now I don't know any conga drummers that use real conga heads. Everybody uses synthetic drum heads so he changed the drum world and the conga world twice he did it you know what i mean so anyway remo belly was was the greatest man wow man that's like an artistic appreciation in a matter of minutes from one <laughs> grammy winning legend about another legend <laughs> in a way that like that's not something i expected to get out of this conversation so i appreciate you for that because now i feel like I'm ready to rip. I think I'm ready to book myself some conga lessons. All actually, right. Because <laughs> that looks pretty hip. I actually saw you. I've seen you play live several times. You used to play live at Lava Lee. Yeah. And mm. uh, I honestly, I mm. love that setting for you. It was an intimate set. You know, what? one of the things about you, Poncho, I'll say is you, the crowd embraces you and the crowd loves you, but you love them back. Like when you're playing live, man, it is such a mutual respect society. Like, people are there because they appreciate your artistry, but you understand, like, hey, I'm here for you. And I've seen you at the Conga Room, and I've seen you at Lava Lee, where you're like, all right, let's 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 tell a few stories and burn this house down, and here we go. <laughs> and it's been such a special occasion, man. Yeah, well, we, we you know, we worked Lava Lee for, oh, man, a long time, like 18 God, years. It's a bummer it's gone. Yeah, and it? it's gone now. Well, they changed into a sports bar or something, or restaurant or something Sign of the time. but um the buffalo wild wings yeah or something. i don't know <laughs> you know but it's good i mean everything's good we had our uh, great times there 
and we used to perform there whenever that was our home away from home whenever we were in town we would play there because uh, we travel we're still doing quite a bit of traveling but in those days i mean i was traveling all the time all over the world you know? i look i owe you a debt because one of the reasons i'm married is because of you like uh-uh. i saw you i used to work at the conga room i saw you play live there i actually thought we you recorded a live album there although larry kind of yeah, no see i'll tell you you're, you're right i you're am right, right. Okay. you're right because what happened is we recorded half of we well we recorded a night at the conga room and then we recorded a night up at uh Kimball's East, uh, it, 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 no, I'm sorry, at Yoshi's in Oakland. Nice. So what we did, we took several songs from the Conga Room uh, night and several songs from the Yoshi's night and made a, a, oops, a record out of that. You see what I'm saying? Right. So that's how, so we did record live. I that. was there for that historical yeah. night. I worked there at the time and I remember mm-hmm. uh, like maybe like, I don't know, a year, year and a half later, I saw you leave in Lava Lee and you were crossing Ventura Boulevard and I rolled down my window and I was dating the woman that became my wife and I'd be like, hey, Poncho! <laughs> and, I, I, and you stop and you're like, hey man, I'm like, I just saw you at the Congo room. I used to work there and you go, I thought you looked familiar, yeah, brother. <laughs> and, I, and I immediately go, oh. And, you're, and you got a dog named Willie. Right. And, uh, no, you played it <laughs> off You got a really yellow well, car. Though. You played it off. I mean, honestly, from your date at the Congo room to that conversation was probably a matter of months. But you played it off very sincerely, and I looked good in front of the woman I ended up marrying. Oh, cool. I have to thank it you for that. It all worked out. So then, I always tell people, like, if I ever see Poncho Sanchez, you know that guy. Uh, I'll open up my wallet for that guy. <laughs> I got him covered. Yeah. But I love that. Hey, I want to say. a $2 say, bill. <laughs> come on now. Give me a little credit, brother. <laughs> Um, real quick, I got two quick questions for you, and it's showtime. You're about to take the stage. Yeah. It's a sold-out show, deservedly so. People are here for a great time, great music, and honestly, great memories. You're a Grammy winner. Walk me through the moment when they called your name and brought mm. you up to the stage to hand you that trophy. <laughs> well, it was, it was pretty exciting. I mean, you know. Pretty I had been, exciting, Poncho. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, let's see, we had been nominated, I think, four times. Yeah, you were. Then. Something like that. And so I said, I, I think it's time for me to win. Yeah. And actually, I felt pretty positive going in that day. I actually felt pretty good. And I said, if they don't give it to me today, I ain't coming back no more. <laughs> right. And they did give it to me. I got the Grammy. And then, uh, let's see, I think it was, I don't know, seven, eight years later, I got uh, a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Grammy. So nice. I haven't, they gave me another Grammy. But my band has been nominated nine times for Grammys. Much deserved. That moment when they're like, and the winner is, you're thinking what? You're was, thinking these it, dudes, I was thinking that it better, it better be, be my me. name in that envelope. I don't want no La La Land from these guys. That better be me. And they and called it, you. And, and then, it was cool. Yeah. It, I was definitely ready for it. You know what I mean? Right, right, and right. And so we, we that was, it was an honor, man. And it was really nice. And then, um, I'm trying to think. I think we played at the, the the after party. I think we also played at the after party. Oh, that's a nice one. I've done a couple of those right. after parties. You know what I mean? Yeah. You better subscribe to this channel before you look uncool.